live. Uh, I'm here live. I'm not a cat. Oh, wow. Let's see here. Uh, I need to be uh, listening to our two. Uh, the cat. Do, 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 do. So I've, I've been practicing the professor's name. I think I have it. Oh, do it, do it, do it. Not his first name. Wait, Professor On Milkage Bedsaba. Was that close? <laughs> <laughs> good, good enough. On Milkage Bedsaba or On Milkage Bedsaba? We'll we'll take it. Well, it's good enough. But what is the correct pronunciation? <laughs> um, I always have to look at it. Like I have to read it. Otherwise, I can't keep all the letters in my head. Um, uh, where do I? I know rats. All my notes are like all over the place now. Um, Jimmy Fedsaba. Uh, Aaron, I'm just gonna just straight up write it down for me so I can read it. <laughs> I had to pull it off the notes. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Professor Zigswudzirk P. Zigswudzirk. <laughs> Fedkaba. Yeah. Anum 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 Jig Fedkaba. Anum Jig Fedkaba. <laughs> okay, so it's a hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, god. Oh. You know, you don't want to offend the professor. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's selling artifacts, maybe we do. <laughs> uh, oh man, I I am really, really, I'm I'm incredibly curious about how, what your approach is going to be, what the party's approach is going to be to to these to this, right? Like, you know, he's looting artifacts, but it's artifacts, you know, ostensibly made by monsters that are extinct mm -hmm. and using it to fund research into goblin history. So it's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, that actually, the parallels in the real world, it does pose an interesting dilemma. Well, I mean, it's, it's so, very, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just thinking like, you know, Nazi artifacts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the people who collect Nazi artifacts, that, you know, I have a problem with that. <laughs> but yeah, that, well, I mean, you, you look at the idea of, um, you know, museums and quote unquote legitimate scholars who have supported the looting of antiquities or the continuation of uh, the antiquities trade for decades, you know, um, writing publications about looted works. Uh, supporting museums that keep looted works, either recently looted works or ones from uh, uh, periods of colonization. Um, there's a book just just came out called uh, the uh, called the Br the British Museums. <laughs> it's, a on, it's a play on the British Museum, only it's the British Museums, and it's specifically ones. Uh, there's a list in the back of museums that have. Uh, Benin bronzes from the British looting of the Kingdom of Benin. Wow. Yeah, I think the Field Museum has some, or I don't know if they still do. Yeah, they actually have a list in the back as an appendix. And there are a couple in my neck of the woods that have them. Ooh. Including the Boston Museum of Fine Arts and the Half and Refer Museum of Anthropology at Brown. Hmm. I'm gonna yeah, have to take... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to have to be like, okay, so I'm going to make a list of museums in this world, and you're going to, those are going to be the dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, museums and monitors. You're going to repatriate yeah. stuff. Yeah.
By the way, just as a heads up, I will have to take uh, some time at some point to put my little one to bed. Um, okay. My wife, unfortunately, is unable to sub out because she's still recuperating from a concussion. Mm. Yeah. Is she okay? <laughs> um, aside from wrestling with the temporary disability folks for the last two weeks, yeah, she's fine. Um, uh. She's She's recuperating. We went to the uh, to the ER, and she had a CAT scan and all that, and she's okay. But it happened three weeks ago, and she's still seeing double. So, mm. that's horrible. Yeah. Ooh, wait. Oh, what? They say the average recovery time from a concussion is anywhere from like twenty three days to like up to sixty. Ooh, ooh, ow, e, ow. Yeah, so you think about athletes that have to go on concussion protocol or, you know, that have concussions and then are told to go back in and play. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Once you realize how serious it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope she gets better soon. Oh, you and me both. She's bored stiff because, of course, she can't look at her phone. She can't watch TV. She can't read. She can't do jigsaw puzzle with me. So. She's stuck listening to podcasts for the last three weeks. Can she, like, at least go outside and, like, do stuff, or...? No, the weather is good, yeah, but, you know, she sits up or walks around for more than 20, 30 minutes, and she starts to get dizzy and has to lay down. Ouch. Yeah. Sounds horrible. She is... Mm incredibly bored she is incredibly bored i think if that there was any other time in which to convince her that i could finally bring her over to the dark side and convince her to play D, &D it might be when she has the concussion because it wouldn't require very much in the way of reading or or uh looking at a screen just playing okay but then again, you figure you get to, those numbers on the dice are pretty small and tough to look at when you have a concussion. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. But if you're seeing double, you're going to roll really, really well. But how is everybody else's week? I know we're waiting for we're waiting for uh, Anna and we're waiting for Ellie, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The week is good. It was busy. I did my annual fire training certification certificate certification. certification blah, I can't even speak. <laughs> certification. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this week. So you know, so I'll work a wildfire. You know, doing uh, as an archaeologist doing resource protection. I know. Oh. I'd, he I'd, I'd heard you talk about that before. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah, it can, it can be. Um, can be? Really... <laughs> well, yeah, as long as you're, you know, days ahead of the fire and not, like, hours ahead of the fire. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that can get scary, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you, you obviously, you don't you don't go in. Every Everyone leaves, but, um, but yeah, it's... Uh, Hopefully, we won't have as bad a fire season as last year. Here's hoping. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, California, every year they say this is going to be the worst year because of a drought, or it's going to be the worst year because we got a lot of rain and there's a lot of vegetation. And uh, Well, the more the climate changes, the worse it's going to get. And that, that, that has definitely happened. So, the last couple, last few years, um we're definitely seeing a change in like fire patterns fire behavior it's 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 without a doubt become more extreme you know you're getting flare-ups like during the night instead of in the late afternoon you know so there's there's definitely changes being observed kind of interesting yeah i I know I want to change some of like the plants in my my yard. And I want to try to use uh, California natives that hopefully would be able to withstand the, the climate change better. Yeah, 
Be a good call. Why are you loading? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to load Roll20 in Firefox and it's not cooperating. Yeah, I think he prefers a uh, Chrome or <laughs> Internet Explorer. Are you on mm-hmm. your new computer? I, I am, am on my new computer. Oh, yeah. Oh, both of you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, the thing is, I've been using Microsoft Edge, and I was so excited because I actually, it's the first time I've ever actually liked a Microsoft browser. <laughs> and it's, it's been very good, but Beyond 20, which I use to migrate, which is the extension that I use to migrate my roles from D&D Beyond to Roll 20, they don't make an extension for Edge. They only do it for Chrome and Firefox. And I'd had such problems with Chrome before. I thought, oh, this time I'll try Firefox. And now it's just simply not loading. That's thanks. Tis for the tis for the tis. I could always figure out a way to import my D&D Beyond character back into Roll20. And then I'd be able to run it from Edge. But I can't figure out how to do that. I looked up instructions online, but those didn't work out at all. Oh, really? That Yeah, you're supposed to do something where you add a um you add to the end of the URL, you add like a JSON thing and then you copy the page content over, but Because mm-hmm. I figure last time I had such a hard time with uh, with Chrome on Roll20, it kept uh, crashing on Chrome, but now it's crashing on Firefox. Mm. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, did you build your computer? Is that what I read? Yeah, I, I built it. Um, it's running pretty well. Um, except I think I have an issue with the graphics card, but I, I've more or less fixed it. Um, like 99.9% fixed. I'm so impressed that you have the skills to build your own computer. It's, it's actually not that hard. The hardest part is making sure that all the parts are compatible. And I asked my friends and they gave me a website and the website does that for you. So, yeah. Well, I, 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 let me put it this way. I'm not mechanically skilled. I tried building my own computer once, and I made the mistake of accidentally using a magnetic screwdriver. Whoops. <laughs> Gee, I wonder, why, why, is, why is everything on my hard drive missing? Where are you, Anna? Oh, hopefully Anna will be joining us soon. I hope Ellie didn't uh, didn't nap through uh, everything. My wife got her first COVID shot and she had knocked her for a loop, so hopefully it didn't happen to Ellie. Oh wow. Yeah, I got my first my first shot too this week. So it was a good week. <laughs> Awesome. Nice. I'm getting mine yeah. this Friday. That's fabulous. Very excited for it. I'm I am so jealous. So jealous. Well, California says what it, what was the date that they it was something pretty ambitious. End I of April or early May to have a hundred percent vaccinated. Did I, I don't that right? I I haven't actually been keeping up with that. It's just I know that at in my age and my um my overall health, yeah, I know that I'm at the back of the line. So I'm like, well, you're yeah. just, just gotta wait. <laughs> yeah, I actually already would have had my shot, except that the uh, the states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island don't consider college professors teachers. K through wow. twelve teachers. Uh, well, because t- because. K through 12 teachers is 
to, if, in a politician's mind, vaccinating K through 12 teachers means getting kids back in school, means getting their parents back to work, means getting the economy going again. Right. Whereas college professors can teach distance learning. They can wait. I so. guess. <laughs> Yeah, Daryl, it says available to those 16 years old and over starting April 15th. Ooh. That's the goal. That's pretty soon. Ooh. If that actually happens. That, <laughs> well, I, yeah. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> if, if, if that's true, then I guess I'm going to be, I'm going to like elbow my way to the front of the line then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cast some sleep spells on people in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to, what can I do? Uh, I mean, after all of this, I'm just wondering kind of like how my life's going to go back together. I mean, like everyone's lives are going to have sort of changed a lot. Because, I mean, right now I'm working as a service agent at, for Best Buy Geek Squad, repairing, repairing appliances. And I'm wondering if I really want to go back to teaching ESL. Hmm. Oh, is it just too unstable to rely on? Yeah, it's, I just got tired of all the extra like weekend work, all the grading papers, making quizzes, reading essays. Yeah. So. And that's that's the life of a teacher. So I'm like, do I want that again? Yeah. It's nice your time off is your time off. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the funny thing, at least with Best Buy, because they keep telling us like, do not spend like, extra time at home. Like take your breaks. Like do not like try to use extra time for this. Like when you clock off, you clock off. <laughs> That sounds like a wonderful idea. Archaeologists <laughs> never clock off. <laughs> they don't even retire, they just finally publish. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm getting sort of like imagining like a Jedi master, like when you finally publish, you like fade away. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then all your collections are left abandoned. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and then I pick them up. That's actually the majority of what I do is I, uh, for my publications, I mostly publish uh, legacy projects, excavations from the 70s and 80s that never got published. Fabulous. I tell you, it is rather interesting trying to reconstruct archaeological contexts from decades-old field uh, field. <laughs> oh, call it you, Willikers. Yeah, that. Hmm. So, did they actually do 100% survey coverage, or did they just drive up that road? <laughs> they didn't say. <laughs> I have some reports like that. Is everything digitized, or do you? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, no, not like those earlier reports. Well, yeah, I mean, we've scanned them in since, but but I've got one survey where it is straight transect lines for miles and miles, you know, up and down mountains. It, you know, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there's no way possible that they really did <laughs> those transects. But um, I spoke with someone who was involved with part of that survey and they said, yep, yeah, they actually did. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, you know, it's the straight, you know, sampling survey strategy. Um, I'm just wondering if you can read their, like, handwriting. Yeah, I don't have the original field notes from that one. I just have what they published. Mm. Which is unfortunate. I wish I had those notes. Yeah. All the doodles in the margins of goblins. <laughs> Short round, where are you? 
I bet you took a nap. <laughs> I'm going to ping them both right now. Yeah. yeah. took a nap. kind of hard to play this game with just two people yeah oh oh yeah well no, i see the end being an archaeologist and <laughs> <laughs> not wanting to do things that the characters probably should do in the game but i just can't bring myself to do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well you gotta you gotta get into the character you gotta get into the character it's it's tough speaking um, of uh D D though for my birthday last week, uh, my wife got me the best gift. She not only did she get me like a a, a, a t shirt that says "Because I'm the DM, that's why." <laughs> uh, she also um, between her and her father in law, uh, I'm going to be able to get the um, first my first uh, Dwarven Forge starter set. Ooh, that's the high quality stuff. Yeah. I figure I'm old in a position I'm in a position where I have money but I don't have the t- it's one of those it's the catch 22 of D&D when you're young you really uh you have the time to play but not the money for all the for all the goodies and then when you're older you have the money for all the goodies but you don't have any time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then do you justify buying the goodies if you don't <laughs> yeah can't play yeah well really the um the painting the minis has kept me sane during quarantine you need something besides work to occupy your mind or you're going to drive yourself around the bend yeah hobbies are cool Yeah, the DM for this other game I've been playing with with friends here locally, so we get together. And he's got a gaming table, and he has a 3D printer, so he <gasps> printed off miniatures and all kinds of, you know, walls and coffins and trees and stuff. And he, he just invested a lot into building this game, you know. And then the pandemic hits, and we're playing on Roll Twenty now, and he has all the stuff that he can't use. <laughs> my my friend is the same way. Um, he has he loves miniatures. He loves painting miniatures. But like we're not playing in person, so it's like whoops. Well, for for me, it's more like I think I started painting, got, getting into painting miniatures during the pandemic, in anticipation of when this is all over. <laughs> <laughs> the most awesome DM ever. Right. We're getting closer to the that day. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Does that mean I have to start making goblin miniatures? Oh my god. Yeah. I just finished my first round of goblin miniatures. I'm actually pretty damn pleased with them. Nice. Doing okay. Doing all right. I don't mind hanging out to wait. I gotta jump off at eight thirty to put the little one to bed anyway. In about twenty minutes. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say bye, but she's not really gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's always here in spirit, watching us. Yeah, listening to us. Speaking of uh, of of minis, did you get a theory uh, 
printed? I did. I ordered <gasps> it from Hero Forge. I was like so excited. So I, I haven't received it yet, but I, I placed the order. Yeah. So thank I, you for designing that. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, was, I love doing it. I love, love, love doing it. It's so much fun. I tried ordering mine for uh, Gradol, but I had a little bit of a uh, issue. My wife and I had just bought a, um, a dining set for the porch and I'd already hit my credit limit. So I was like, why isn't this going through? Why isn't this going through? But <laughs> it's like, no, oh, yeah, that big purchase. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when so, that happens. <laughs> Sarah, I know you're muted, but um, uh, did, did, are you going to print yours? That's okay. Mm-hmm. She's probably not here. Daryl, you can print yeah. yours. The DM. Uh, I, I, you know what? That I'm, I'm just trying to think. Like, huh? What can I actually show it to people? Like, where am I going to show it? Like, yeah. oh, well, it's just, just make him the uh, the BBEG for the end of the campaign. The end <laughs> of the campaign. Oh, I. I actually have an idea for for a, a big bad evil guy. Um, yeah, I think it'd be hilarious. I think a lot of people would like it. Um, and I you think I would like to go with that one. Ghosts. <laughs> Let me think. Hmm. You, you know, oh, <laughs> uh, obviously we're going to do some more dinosaurs. Obviously I'm going to have to make some dinosaur mounts so that everybody gets their own dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I think little Gretel is just going to get like a Comthognosaurus or something like that. One of the tiny little ones. Yeah. Um... So I'm just thinking, like, where, where, what kind of adventure you're like interested in going on to next? Because this is going to be like a super, like, this part here, super, super, like, archaeology focused. Because I thought this would be an interesting thing for the the mini con, but that turned that you know, yeah, uh, that turned out not to be. Um, the next thing we could use just do straight fantasy adventure. I love, I love a good dungeon crawl. I love political entry. I love a good horror one like mm. Curse of Strahd or something like that, you know? Or maybe we save that for October. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Horror. Hmm. Hmm. But wait, what kind of horror do you like, though? Are you talking like, um... Me? I'm... I, I don't know, and... and, and uh, I, I don't know... Uh, I, I'm pretty cool with just about any kind of horror. Um, D and I love a good, cre- really, really creepy undead story. You know. Okay. Okay. I suppose, but I, I and I'm I'm fine with anything. I figure with. Um, with so many games of phasmophobia under their belt, there could be a lot of people who would earn both for Right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, writing down notes. This will come back to haunt you. Ba-ba. Pun intended. <laughs> so as long as we have D&D heads in the line and we're just chatting anyway, does anybody yeah. have a favorite module? That they've done before. Uh, most of the stuff I've done has been like homebrew stuff. I don't think I've really done much uh, uh, mo- uh, modules. Oh. The couple that I've played, I mean, I haven't played a lot. So, uh, so the one that we're using in another game is, I think it's called Tales of the Yawning Portal. Yeah, I have that book. I've played it, Tony, uh, Tales of the Yawning Portal before. Yeah, there are a few really that. good ones. Yeah, it's got like that Aztec Mayan, you know, theme to it that is would be kind of fun to 
talk about as archaeologists because <laughs> those are just merge merge concepts. But mm-hmm. and then yeah. I, we're doing another one that that's uh, salt marsh, and so there's pirates and kraken and. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, salt marsh is cool. That, that one's pretty fun. I played uh, Forge of Fury and the Sons of Citadel from the Yawning Portal. But I remember, God, I remember when I was a kid playing AD&D 2nd Edition. And God, I'm really aging myself here. But um, I'm playing like in the, uh, the, the Dark Sun campaigns and stuff like that. Like really, really dark, interesting stuff. Yeah, the Dark Sun, didn't they have a bunch of books? That's the thing that I'm kind of missing. Does D&D still do, or rather, does Wizards of the Coast still do uh, novels to coincide with the different D&D editions? Short answer, I don't know. I thought um, Greyhawk had like a whole bunch of novels. Well, I know they've ha- they had novels, I just don't know if they're still doing them. Hmm. I know that Ari Salvatore is still putting out Drist books. <laughs> really? He, he's never going to stop doing that. Yeah, he just put out. Put, he just put one out last year. He's. I think. He, I think he's cranking them out at the pace of one or two a year. Really? Yeah. I. Mad respect to that sort of production, like. <laughs> But at the same time, I'm like, one or two a year, what's the quality like? I don't know. I, Drist is so popular, I think you can pretty much guarantee that no matter what, it's going to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. Yeah. I think Ed Greenwood's still putting out books, too. Well, I could be wrong. I'm looking at the... Forgotten Realms. So let's see. I see something was released in 2013. I don't know if anything else has been released that's more recent than that. Yeah. I know Salvatore put out a Driss novel called Relentless last year, and then another one, I think it was called like Timeless the year before that, but I haven't read any of them. I just Saw him at the Barnes and Noble back when I could go to a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> hmm. Apparently, Sarah is a big fan of just. <laughs> <laughs> Dragons of Summer Fall, etc. She's got a. She's going to have to cosplay Drist uh, for next uh, con. Uh, Short Round is just posted saying she's coming. <laughs> oh, poor thing. I've been there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've so been there. Losing your glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's a helpless feeling. Uh, let's be fair, Sarah. We're all dorks here. That's true. The dorkening. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, when we jump into uh, play, I got to figure out how I'm going to get Roll20 to work. I'm in. I'm in Roll20. Oh, as a matter of fact, they're going to turn the camera off. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Oh, 
awesome. I'm going to test out one of my ability checks just to make sure that the thing is working. I'll do a history just for get some shiggles. And of course, I rolled a two. So two. Well, if you got to roll low, roll low when it doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get those out of the way. Yeah. Because I think la- where we last left off, everybody in the camp was asleep when we were going through the uh, the tent looking at uh, various artifacts. And we're trying to figure out which ones are cursed and which ones aren't. Creepy skull. Yeah. Oh, I love that drawing of the skull, Daryl. That was... <laughs> 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 Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I woke up from my nap a little bit late, and then I was scrambling. I think my glasses like fell off the bed, and I was like, "Oh God, where'd they go?" <laughs> I can't do it without glasses. Are you gonna take off the mask and tell us who the swamp monster really is? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, it was Daryl. <laughs> just for that, just for that, Bigfoot's gonna come and mess up your walls. <laughs> He's gonna mess up your unit. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick, so long as I don't have dainty foot. So <laughs> that's right. Uh. <laughs> By the way, Anna, I want to say I love the web page you put together. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. I, I, if anybody wants access to it so that they can edit it at any time, um, just uh, send me, send me your email, and I'll add you to the like Squarespace Weebly kind of uh, editing rights. But I just thought it'd be really cool, we, just a small, simple link that we can drop people and say as little as possible. But I keep looking at all these other D and D web pages. It seems like this is something people like doing, and. Some of them look so much fancier and they have like the theme and parchment paper and like wood and, and different kind of medieval elements going on on the web page. And it's not letting me do that. And I'm kind of sad. Aww. I'll have to fiddle with it a little bit more, but it's work in progress. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, shout out to the. Oh, for the for the link for uh for people listening, it's uh it's just uh I think it's what is it? Goblin Town uh goblin minus town dot weebly dot com. And if you go to goblin town with no minus dot weebly dot com, you'll see a much cooler website. I didn't put that one together. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> now I have to check no. it out. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. I wish I could contact that person and get their uh they're like how they like they're uh the the coding for this but it's beautiful eh, i like your goblin dash town one a little bit better <laughs> well, that's good to hear it's a closer a to a critical role it says they would they're hopefully coming out 2014 so i don't think they're really using it anymore yeah so give it to me <laughs> so i can use this yeah. <laughs> I'll buy it off of them. This is a shout out. This is a live shout out. Whoever owns Goblin Town com, I will purchase this from you. I I I'm willing to put in like twenty bucks. I don't know, twenty <laughs> bucks. Person's like, this campaign means everything to me. I don't want to give it up. All right, fifty. <laughs> I'll work with you. Yeah. Uh. All right. Getting uh getting logged in here. Excellent. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Everybody doing okay? Generally. I'm I'm excited and anxious and terrified about what you, you all are gonna do to this poor doctor. <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, no. So, are we still waiting for Ellie, or are we going to dive in? Um, 
Well, do you want to put, uh, do you want to go off and do that thing you were going to do real quick? Cause it's about time. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, in like five I'll, minutes, uh, I'll start doing the, the recap. Awesome. And I'll, uh, I'll go put the little one to bed. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs> right. That sounds good. I'll, uh, try to post about this on Twitter. has it been since we've played? Come on. That the that Squarespace was like giving me, so I'm looking at that and getting all jealous. Oh wow! Well. Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to Goblin Town. <laughs> okay, so it's been a little while, but here we are again. We have uh, Dagmar, Gradal, Ethere, and Janera should be here in just a few moments. Welcome all. Um, hello. Yeah, everybody say hello. <laughs> hello, hello, Internet. Um, so I'm just going to recap from last time because it's been a little while. So hopefully it'll help rejog our memories. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay. So the, the party came to Oak Ridge. Uh, so I'll move that. I'll move some of these pictures out of the way here. So Oak Ridge is this town that is above, um, that is above Clark, uh, just a bit north of Clark, and the the party was able to uh, track down the source of where some of these cursed artifacts were coming from. Uh, the the shovel hobs. Um, they followed the red stream upriver and found their encampment in the hills above Oak Ridge. Um, and there they met the uh, they met the professor Zix Vudzirk P. Onumlukajig Fedkaba uh, and his uh, team of uh, shovel hobs who were digging a site. Um, that involved early goblin and dinosaur interactions. Um, when everyone went to bed, the party decided to check up on, on some of the artifacts that the shovel hops had stored in one of their tents. And there they discovered a very, very, very strange skull. Unlike anything they've ever seen before. And this skull possibly could be cursed in its own way. Um, it seemed to be giving one of the goblins, uh, giving the, the goblin Fred uh, bad dreams. So now the party mm, needs to come to a decision. Um, what are they going to do about the shovel hobs? What are they going to do about the artifacts that they're digging up? Um, Will it help them? Will it hinder them? What will they do? Um. So, we're going to assume that we're that the the party is. They can either be sort of discussing this over the 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 dying embers of the campfire just before they go to sleep, while all the other goblins are uh, asleep. Uh, that way they don't bother them and they can sort of speak a little more frankly without being uh, uh, overheard. Uh, unless you have some other sort of plans. 
So, what do you think, Dagmar? What do you think, Asiri? I think we should discuss this over the campfire, what our next plan is going to be. Okay. I agree with that. Um, so, Gradol will return in a few minutes, um, and Chanera is... Uh, Janera, the player is not here yet, but we'll assume that Janera, the the character, has fallen asleep again, <laughs> and I'll wake up in the middle of her uh, nap. It's a it's a theme. We need fan art of Janera sleeping against like a like a tree or something. The same thing every time. <laughs> oh no, narcolepsy. Um. <laughs> um. Doesn't one of the shovel hobs have a teddy bear, a cursed teddy bear, or something? Okay, so Fred, Fred has a teddy owl bear, um, and I don't remember if Dagmar, you still have it or not, or you gave it back to Fred. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I still have it. I don't think I I would have wanted to give it up. I think he might have tried to pull it from me, and I didn't allow it. I think I won <laughs> that. Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> you give me a gift, you're not going to get it back. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Dagmar rolls. Okay. Um. And so, and uh, and Gradal still has the cursed cup, doesn't he? N- no. Um. The Dagmar, remember you repatriated it. You like shoved it back on um Brag Thim. Remember? Oh, I don't remember that. I thought I was like outside of that establishment the entire time. Um, Dagmar, well, that was the thing. Totally Gra- did that. Yeah, Gra- Gradle had that like scene. He made like a really big scene in front of the shop and in, in like the middle of the street. Like, you're gonna take this back. How dare you? <laughs> and like, <laughs> yeah, you know, shoved, basically shoved it on the counter and like turned around and walked away. Left the man speechless. <laughs> And since then, I gained a respect for Gradol forever. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Are you gonna do more uh, charisma, charisma skill rolls, Dagmar? <laughs> In today's session, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not are... intimidation. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Um, so I just, let's start doing some brainstorming though, because, um, I want you to start thinking about what your characters, uh, obviously you as archaeologists have certain opinions about this, but remember that Dagmar, a theory, and the party at large are not exactly archaeologists. Um, so you need to be start thinking like, okay, um, what would they want to do here? What, what exactly is something, what kind of... What would be your priority here? Would your priority be stopping people from getting hurt? Or would your priority be like, let them do what they feel like? Or would your priority be making money? I don't know. I feel like anytime that I have to talk about the ambitions and wishes that Dagmar might have in a certain situation, it has to be preceded by, hello, she's not an archaeologist, and what she, and her morals are very conflicted, but, uh, and maybe just straight up wrong. But I think, I think Dagmar, the character, and not Anna, the archaeologist, would be thinking about what kind of spoils, um, are potentially being dug up at this site and what the party could potentially gain from stepping in and maybe taking it for themselves because where Dagmar comes from, Dagmar was something of a raider. But Dagmar is going to be a little bit quieter about this because she doesn't know where the party stands on this sort of thing and the party doesn't entirely have a clue about her background just yet. Dun dun dun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Okay, hopefully that looks all right. I gotta okay. zoom all the way out for that. Um, Where's the datum? <laughs> I hope it looks okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I don't know how to scale my map. Sorry, I'm doing my best. I may have to rescale a few things, but uh... <laughs> my my loose field notes look like this. Seriously, like this looks really good, and I and I just love that. Dr. Pickle drew himself in his location. I, I probably said that last time, but he's on the map. <laughs> That's really cool. I don't put myself on the map. I need to no. start. <laughs> exactly. You are the hero of your own story, okay? <laughs> you gotta put yourself in there. He's like, he's like drawing the location of where the, the bones are at, and then it's like afterwards, like almost an afterthought. He's like, so this is where the bones are. But here's me. This is where I was. <laughs> I'm special too. I'm a treasure. <laughs> so I'm just putting that down that map. Hint, hint. Um, just so you have a vague idea of what uh, what we're looking at. I think, oh yeah, and then the last note that we left off of was that uh, that strange bone, the, the, the strange skull that we found. Um, that strange bone is not from this site, it's from a previous site north of Oak Ridge, or further north. Right, right. So the... Um... But none of us knew what to make of that, and Fred, I think Fred knows something about it. I feel like Fred needs to be included on this bonfire. Well, Fred already went to sleep, and Fred mentioned that the skull reminded him of his dreams. Like it's it's a very very he he hasn't seen he hasn't really looked at the skull before, but it's very very familiar to him. Like he like he's like he's seen it in his dreams, or he, he has seen something with a face that would match the skull in his dreams. Dagmar wants to wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just gonna shove the skull in his face? Like, did you just see this now? Did you just see this now? <laughs> Describe your dream to me in intimate details. Go. <laughs> oh, I know. You're gonna have to do the um. What is it? The dream psychology experiment where you like give them a signal. And, like once you're dreaming, you have to move your eyes. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over and he's like, "Do I get paid for this? I hear some people get paid to dream. Do I get paid to dream?" <laughs> <laughs> If you make enough money on this job, then sure, go ahead, pay people to have dreams. <laughs> yeah, I think we wanted to find where that cursed cup came from, too, right? And, and where this creepy skull came from. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a theory wants to track where the, uh, you know, the looters and the black market, the, the path, find out who's buying and selling this stuff. Besides the professor. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't find any other information with the skull about where it came from, because we went through the notes, didn't we? Uh, all, he, all he had were the notes about his excavation. I remember. So you would have found the notes, and the notes would explain exactly where it is. It would actually give you like a way to find it. Um, I just don't have that map for you. <laughs> um, so. Uh, well, so I think a theory wants to go back into that tent and grab those notes and take them while everyone's asleep. Okay. Um. So, a theory, go ahead and make a stealth check um, okay. for that, just to go steal them. Um, you know, just, just make sure you don't, like, completely mess up. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, okay. I didn't roll a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, you go ahead and steal the notes, or whatever it is you, you need for the, to find the location of the origin of the skull. Yeah. Um, 
so in reading in reading the notes about the skull i, I don't know if you're going to share this with dagmar or are you going to share the notes with dagmar yeah okay well so there's a particular site it's an it's maybe another two or three days journey mm-hmm. for the north of oak ridge um where where this skull was found um and the associated bones and you see a lot of notes that there are actually a lot of associated um, artifacts when you find bones like this you find other um, artifacts and these artifacts um and there's a lot of notes and these artifacts are kind of strange um they're the motifs they use are kind of odd they're not quite like things that you're sort of used to seeing um and they're always metal um the metal can have some sometimes strange, the, and it's the metal's odd that the notes say that the metal is never rusted. That the the metal always seems very very um, it's very pristine, relatively speaking for for metal that's been in the ground for hun, hun, thousands of years. Interesting. Okay, and we have a map. Yeah. Cool. So I'll. I'll actually show you. I actually did a few little doodles of um. Doo, 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 doo. So here is here's uh, sketches of at least one of the artifacts that the uh, that you look at in the notes. Okay, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I want to say it's cool, but I'm I'm rather uh, scared of it. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to see it intestines. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the the notes say that um the artifact on the left, both of them are metal, but the artifact on the left is about six seven feet long, or like somewhere around seven feet long. Um. So it's basically about as long as a person. So, um. It's it's like a metal. Um, uh, it's just this large metal plate, um, and it kind of has like a curved bottom, uh, and it it looks like that. And there's a bunch of scratches on it, like these long scratches on the top of it. It's not rusted, uh, but is that uh, the pick mark from the excavation? <laughs> I no, it, no, they do it properly. Okay, there. It's when they when they. When the first bit sort of comes out, they start, they move to brushes. Okay. They, oh, good. <laughs> okay. They move the brushes and trowels. They're very careful. Now, are are Dagmar and I there with the theory, or? Yeah, yeah. So right now you're all around the campfire and you're discussing like, what are you going to do? Now, right? is there is there a similarity between these artifacts and the metal cup that? Uh, we uh found with um what's her name in the graveyard yes so the uh the metal the metal when you just when you look at the notes describing the metal of these artifacts it does sound familiar in that the metal was was shiny and kind of a light green kind of like when you think of like bronze or copper, once it's sort of tarnished, it turns a green, something like that, but more of a silver, silverish green. But that's how it is naturally. That's just it. It stays that way. Um. Now, um, you said that it. However, it doesn't seem to tarnish, though. It just seems to be part of the metal. Like it seems very pristine, right? Yes. Yes. Um, the notes, when yeah. you look at it, that the metal is, these artifacts, um, you can dent them. Mm-hmm. Like, they're they're soft enough that you could take a pickaxe and like, or a hammer and beat them into new shapes or whatever. Um, but they don't seem to rust. They don't seem to um, uh, oxidize. So are, are are we just looking at the notes, or are those artifacts also there in the tent where we were? These these are these are just in the notes. That's it. Just in the notes. Okay. The 
the object on the right, however, is much larger. You're talking about an object that's like. So the cup is much larger than the statuette. Oh, well, so the the statuette looking thing is not really a statue. It's it's like a, a metal plate, a long metal plate that's about life size to a human. The thing on the right is not a cup. It's like a really really big basin, um, oh. because it's like twelve fifteen feet high. Like think of that that kind of large. Um. So it's like it it's you can tell like it's it's like the size of like a cistern almost. With the object that's the side of the uh, a, a human being, God, I don't think I think I'm probably the only one old enough to get this reference. But I'm gonna go up and and get uh, close to the notes and look at it and whisper so that everybody, uh, but that so everybody can hear me. So they say, "Be careful! Don't touch the side." <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, you do read some further notes. Uh, the basin object that's on the right, um, that the doctor wrote notes saying that there were a lot of stains on the inside. There's a very, very dark stain on the inside of it. Um, so there was something that sat in it that left that stain. Dagmar, taste it. <laughs> well, we, we, we just have the note. No. We just have the note. She shouldn't taste the note. <laughs> don't rub the side of it, but go ahead and taste it. It's fine. <laughs> I just have to say... Whenever I'm out in the field and I pick up something, because I have I have difficulties, I, I'm not good with bones, and I'm I'm a rock person, and I think everything is a rock. And so, yeah, yeah, Daryl knows where this is going. And so I am always the person, no matter what crew I'm on, I am always the person who gets told, Anna, why don't you lick it? Why don't you lick it and find out? Why don't you see if it sticks? <laughs> Anna has to be the one that does it. We all know. We know the answer. Go ahead, find out. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't? Okay. Um, Did like... I like it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My my suggestion is is why don't you sort of get back at them? There's a Japanese horror movie um called The Goblin or something like that. It, it doesn't have I goblins in it. it. It's it's just called yeah. The Goblin, but it's that's that's what it is. Um, and there's an archaeologist in it, and he. It's funny because he has a, a little machine like an egg beater, but at the end of the egg beaters, it's like feathers or brushes or something like that. So instead of having to manually brush things, he basically just spins the egg beater and it brushes out the the unit for him like very quickly. <laughs> Wow. So I'm thinking you should have a similar thing and you're just going to have to like bottle your spit and have like a sponge <laughs> tongue to like test things so you don't have to do it yourself. Let me take out my, my little tiny like uh, mobile tongue machine out of my backpack <laughs> and then we'll, we'll give this a shot. <laughs> I'll try it. Oh my God. <laughs> Daryl, can you draw that? <laughs> I, you know what? We'll do it. I'll, um, I'll put Demar in a little Indiana Jones hat and uh, <laughs> it's the and keeper. A, and a mobile tongue machine. <laughs> it's compact, too. <laughs> I knew I didn't watch that movie for a good reason. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. <laughs> What, what's the uh, what's the plan here? Yeah, I, uh, oh, we're still oh, over the fire. If you want, you can roast marshmallows. You make some <laughs> s'mores. Um, I'll I'll just assume that you wake up one of the goblins and ask him for some graham crackers and marshmallows and chocolate. Fred, I woke up Fred. Uh, he like groggily like looks up at you like, huh? What? 
Are you having bad dreams again? No, are you? Maybe. What kind? And like, and like eyes, eyes, uh, eyes the teddy owl bear. Um. <laughs> what, what kind? Um. <laughs> you know, kind of the ones they talked about. Like, a I feel like I'm being chased by something. Does that sound familiar to the bad dreams that I was having when I had the uh, had Ami's cup? Um, so for you, Gradol, most of your dreams were of like blue meanies. Like, um, yeah, most of your dreams, you kind of you kind of felt like you were, like you you felt like you were sitting up in bed, mm -hmm. and like you'd be looking around. And you could sort of see blue meanies kind of wandering around you. Not necessarily right next to you, but maybe 30 or 40 feet away. Like if you were in a room, you might peek them out through the window in the alley or something like that. But that was only in your dreams. If you woke up in the middle of it, they wouldn't be there. Gotcha. So we don't know where these two items are, but we, we know they're not here at this site. Well, we can um, always ask Zixjewufen. Uh, we can always ask Zixjewufen pon milk jigfedkaba in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, the, the notes don't say exactly who sold it to, but they do say that they've been sold. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, the, um, there would have been no space for these particular items in the, the tent uh, that you were looking at. All right, but we know they came from a site north of Oak Ridge. So yeah. I think we should go there in the morning. Yeah, because if these, if these, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I need to get into character. <laughs> uh, if if these uh, thingy bobs are, uh, are indeed cursed, we'll want to probably find the, uh, the source of the curse and then, uh, then maybe we can get uh, Professor. Uh, I'll just call him. I think we could decide to call him Professor Pickle. We'll get Professor Pickle's support in, uh, in tracking down the owners. Hopefully, you do remember the hair, Doctor McPickle is uh, his <laughs> colleague at uh, the sophisticated university, and currently has tenure. <laughs> Dagmar's like, what? What's tenure? What? <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. You're just a man. Uh, ten years. This really, really. Um, <laughs> ten years. This really, really tough beef, beef jerky. It takes a really long time to make. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it's like when you've worked at a university for ten years. You get ten year. <laughs> oh shoot! Nice one. That's not bad. That was very funny. <laughs> that's good. I've never heard that one before. Doesn't it? <laughs> that's awesome. Tagmar is just like I don't, I don't, I don't respect authority. I, I, I don't, I don't. You don't. You're just a pickle man. Hmm. Well, I believe the pickle man is actually sleeping right now. So, did we want to see if we can? <laughs> Do we want to see if we can catch some Z's here in camp and then uh, ask uh, Dr. Pickle in the morning? Or shall we uh, rouse him out of his sleep now and uh, try to get some answers? I think, I think that sounds like a better plan to talk with everybody once they're all woken up. So Dagmar agrees. <laughs> Okay. Um, go ahead, Theory. Give your voice. Uh, give your opinion on this. But I think we may need to wait one or two minutes because I think Janera just logged in. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the only thing is, is I, I stole the notes. I stole his notes. So I don't know if I want to oh, go in. And oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, they were lost. <laughs> happens more than you'd think. Um, 
so uh, did it, it, the question is, is are, are we taking these notes with us or should we leave them where we found them? Uh, and because here's the thing, if we took his notes, do we really want to be here in the morning when he wakes up? No. I mean, the notes have the map so and the, the artifacts, so maybe we could just leave them since we've seen it. We can put it, put the notes back. Well, we'll probably actually we'll probably need the map. Hmm. I wonder if if uh, DM if I were to if two of us were to work together, could we attempt to copy uh, Doctor Hair Doctor Pickles notes to take with us, so that way we would have a copy that we could take with us. Um. So you can go ahead and copy them. The remember that they are written in Goblin, so Dagmar is the only person who can't read them at the moment. Um, you go ahead and roll. Let me think. Um, I guess none. Wait, who has a proficient? Do any of you have like proficiency in history? Not I. Chanera does. Uh, Chanera. Might be wrong on that. Um. So, whoever's going to be copying them, make a, a general intelligence, uh, intelligence skill check. So this would be intelligence. If you have proficiency with intelligence, you make it with proficiency. But if you don't, then you, you don't. Um, so, uh, so basically, the equivalent be, of intelligence save. Would this be uh, Janera copying them since she's got the uh, proficiency in history? Well, let's just wait. Janera is typing. Never mind. I'm like staring at the roll 20 like a chat box. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um so just go ahead and make um make an intelligence uh check. Whoever's gonna write it. Um if 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 Janera comes on and can make the roll, then we'll let her re redo it or whatever. But let's just see what we can do with what we have. Well, I'll uh, I'll give it a shot. My I I don't have proficiency. And do you have my, guidance? My, my you have guidance. Zero. I do have guidance. I can guide myself, so I'll start with guiding myself. So I'll add a four to whatever my thing is, and I will do. A history check, which will hopefully come out better than the last history check I just did when we hadn't started playing yet. Okay, 15. Um, so, Gradal, you... Uh, you succeed in copying the notes, and they are fairly... Um, uh, they're fairly faithful, fairly uh, accurate to what the what the doctor had uh, written down for himself. So does this include, does this include the map or, or just yeah, this, the, this will just include everything. So uh, otherwise the maps that I would, have I would have shown you later would have been like all like done in crayon. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What's um, that stain? No, oh, it's just a coffee stain. Don't worry about that. I, I will say that the, um, that everything is the same except in the margins. I've written uh, a bunch of little pretty flowers. <laughs> And um, there are hearts over all the eyes. Excellent. <laughs> oh, golly, she will like are you gonna put eye? Are you gonna put heart eyes on that? Uh, on that plate. What plate? The uh, the metal plate that I was talking about. The uh, the artifact. The... Oh, do we do we actually have that artifact? I thought we only had the notes. No, but I mean, you have the notes of it, so I figure when you copy the notes of it, or you copy the drawing, you put a little heart eyes on top of the, the face there, right on top of the brain. 
I, no, uh, <laughs> no, I'll probably just, uh, I'll probably leave it as is only maybe the, uh, the drawing of the figure instead of just having his hands up over his head, maybe he's holding a bouquet. Excellent. Very excellent. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go sneak back in and return the original notes. Okay. I'll, uh, oh gosh, I don't, I don't know what <laughs> be useful for in this situation. I guess, uh, I'll go kind of bodyguard for a theory, maybe watch out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the goblins aren't really being very cautious. Um, you can tell you don't generally expect people to come be coming looking for them. Um, it is getting very, very late, though. I mean, at this point, this is like midnight or one in the morning. So yeah. you'll need some sleep. Yeah. I think sleep sounds like a great idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Better than my second suggestion, which was going to be, okay, I'll go over to Janera and just poke her away. <laughs> 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 She's trying to join us right now. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. I poked her away. Excellent. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I feel bad about the uh, laptop, though. I had the same issue and had to do it for my phone. It's not fun. Yeah. Um... So I'm assuming all of you just go to sleep. Um, uh, so you all just roll out one of your sleeping bags. Dagmar still hugging the teddy owl bear. Yes. Um, and the rest of you just fall asleep then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because you went to sleep very late, uh, I'm guessing that you will then awaken at a similarly late hour. Uh, except for a theory, let me double check something, because you're half-elf. I don't remember if um, half-elves are quite the same as elves when it comes to sleeping. I can't remember. Uh... Okay, no. So you, you just have to sleep regularly. Okay. Um, Human sleep. <laughs> so the yeah. next morning, you actually hear a lot of the hustle and bustle of the camp moving and buzzing and moving about. Uh, you can hear, like, shovels scraping into dirt. You can hear um, wooden wheels sort of rolling. Um, you do hear a little bit of metal clanging as people are sort of stirring pots. Um, and you can hear the goblins are singing. Uh, and as you strain your ears, you can hear the goblins singing a very distinct uh, song. Um, and you can hear them sing, Ancient Tools and Burials plants and seeds neanderthals all these things make no apology for the study of archaeology and we also do dinosaurs yes we also do dinosaurs oh you <laughs> come in chat i hate you <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, can I just say now that, that I'm here finally? Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, Sarah, that we need a recording of her wise. <laughs> Pension master singing that song, and that should be our end credits. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, music sponsor. We don't need you anymore. 
<laughs> no, don't no, use me. We don't have them as the opening. We just use Daryl as the, as the end credit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or like, will we get become big enough as like the commercial break outro and intro? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so you, the goblins are sort of uh, singing and doing their business, um, and if you sort of lift your heads, you can see some of them were actually working in the unit, um, brushing and do going over the. Uh, let me let me uh, pull up that uh, that picture. Uh, da, 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 da. Where did I put that picture? Okay, there's the... Da, 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 da. So, you can see that a lot of uh, goblins are working um, in this unit, sort of brushing away um, at the dinosaur. Uh, the, the, the professor here... Okay, so... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say professor. I'm going to save myself. <laughs> the professor walks up to you and he's like, oh, good morning, sleepyheads. Uh, you're, you're finally awake. So you need breakfast. You'll need to eat a breakfast that's full of brain food. Don't worry, we have plenty of uh, oatmeal with sardines in it. Do you have any of that tenure jerky? <laughs> Tenure jerky. <laughs> that sounds like brain food. <laughs> like tenure just takes his head I'm like uh, a fool's errand. Hmm. Well sardines and oatmeal does sound interesting. At least they're both healthy fats. Plenty of omega omega threes. Hmm. So, uh, do we want to uh, grab some breakfast that is not oatmeal and sardines and then uh, head north? Oh, you're leaving already? You didn't want to stay behind? I'm oh, that, uh, um, um, sorry, I, I thought that... Uh, Hair Doctor Pickle had already left. My apologies. Oh well, he's he's looking at you. He, he's like standing there, like he's he's okay. motioning like goblins to come, like bring them, bring them, heaping, heaping, steaming bowls of oatmeal with with sardines in them. Is this gonna be like one of those situations where we have to eat it, otherwise we offend them? <laughs> Well, I think that's up to you whether you actually care whether you offend him or not. <laughs> so, the bulls come up to you, like, you know, goblins, uh, smiling, bright eyed and bushy tailed holding up the, a nice, warm bowl of oatmeal, and you see, like, the little sardine tails, like, sticking out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> if anyone needs it, I do have a purify food and drink spell. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I take a bowl and I say thank you. And then in theory, sleight of hands the sardines out of the oatmeal and sticks them in Dagmar's pocket. <laughs> I put him in Dagmar's bowl. I add him to her oatmeal, not her pocket. <laughs> Dagmar like looks bad. down. At him. <laughs> her pocket is like then she knocked the wall to see if she noticed, and then if she didn't notice, then it'd be like all of a sudden, what is that smell? And it's rotting sardines in her pocket. <laughs> yeah, that would be rude. <laughs> Rotting flowers, <laughs> a combination of shit. I uh, <laughs> no, I put them in her bowl, which is no, I could. <laughs> I, can, 
I can just imagine Dagmar like when she like checks out a room for uh, an inn and like has the keys in her park pocket and when she like pats herself down, it's like, why are all of these sardines here in all of my pockets? <laughs> I didn't even know I had pockets. What? <laughs> what a concept. Of course she did. Down with the patriarchy. <laughs> 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 no, no. Did I notice? Did I notice that the uh, sardines went into my bowl? Okay, so whoever is slipping sardines onto the other person's bowl, you have to roll a sleight of hand check. So go to yeah. your character sheet and roll a sleight of hand. Oh, uh, good. good. <laughs> Mark, you have to roll perception. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> 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 now, wait, a theory. Where were they going? The bowl, right? The bowl. Okay. Into the bowl, yeah. Into her own bowl. <laughs> okay, so Dagmar, you have to play this as in character. You you, ha you cannot sort of metagame this. Uh, Dagmar have started eating the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This, this, these. Oh, this bowl of oatmeal is the saltiest bowl of oatmeal you have ever eaten. <laughs> At this point, I feel like it's probably more sardines than it is oatmeal. <laughs> She's like hung over and she doesn't like entirely know what's going on. <laughs> Didn't notice that at all. Dizzy, groggy, not a morning person. She's used to eating fish, but this tastes different. This is this is not this is not it. And so with every with every bite, she's just like, ugh. Mm -mm. God, God, this is awful. This is god awful. <laughs> Oh. And I'm just eating mine, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Least of fish in there, but otherwise, it's an oatmeal. You know, you notice there's a one goblin that happens to have like a pocket full of blueberries, and it's like sharing them with some of the other goblins, and they put the blueberries in their oatmeal. They still eat it with sardines, but then it's an oatmeal with blueberries and sardines. <laughs> if you'd like, you can ask them for some. Can I get some of those blueberries, please? I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, only hand you some. Thank you. <laughs> Dagmar is just like, give me the whole bag! The whole bag! Are you really going to threaten them? Yeah! <laughs> like better. Okay, roll intimidation. Well, wait, wait, are you gonna actually intimidate them, or are you just asking them? No, no, she's 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 grossed out by the food big time. So she's yeah. <laughs> I win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as soon as you approach and you like look at them, they start to hold out. So they like reach in and hold and like with one hand, they're about to hold a handful of blueberries to you. But when you start to growl at them, they kind of switch and, like, give you the bag and keep, like, the handful to themselves. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll leave, I'll leave a such a bully tag. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, like, I'll leave some in the bag, but I'll sprinkle a whole hell of a lot of that into the bowl. <laughs> Overflowing. You can't even see the oatmeal or the fish. <laughs> This is how Goblin Town does breakfast. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know what Grandal is doing. What are you doing, Grandal? Grandal is actually picking the sardines out of his oatmeal, taking out two slices of bread from his pack, yeah. along with a uh, a fresh avocado that he keeps on hand, and he's slicing up the avocado. And making an avocado and sardine sandwich. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Which is actually something sandwich? that Michael enjoys quite a bit. I do, I <laughs> actually make that for myself quite a bit. <laughs> okay, then. Are the goblins noticing any of this going on? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, not not particularly. They're um they're they're sort of enjoying the, their food. They they sort of smile. Um uh, you know, they're they're really enjoying themselves. Uh you know, my, you can hear them sort of munching. Um, None of them have their mouths closed as they eat, um, <laughs> as they enjoy their breakfast. Oh, those shovel hobs. Uh, um, can, can I do a, um, just a perception check to look around and see if there are any goblins that are particularly looking tired or bleary-eyed, like maybe they didn't sleep well or had bad nightmares? The only one that you notice is like that is Fred. Nobody else seems to be doing that. But if you remember, Fred is the only one that slept near the tent. And so we as the party, we would already be suspicious and like cognizant that we need to like pay attention to Fred. Yeah, because um uh, Did we know Fred, he's Yeah, yeah. He's already explained that he's had weird dreams. The dreams seem to involve some sort of being that resembles the skull. The dreams have been coming, have been around for a few days or a few weeks, seemingly coinciding with when that that skull was um, dug up and stored in the tent. Um, the professor is aware of it, uh, and that's why the professor or the professor is aware that he's had bad dreams. He's had trouble sleeping, rather, and so mm -hmm. the professor is the one that gave him the teddy owl bear. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So. Are we are we noticing that his kind of you know sort of condition is getting any worse or is he just kind of usual? He seems about the same as he was before, um, but it's just sort of tired, you know. Is uh, is, is hair Doctor Pickle still there? Uh, yeah, he's actually he's actually looking at you eat, and he's actually um. He's actually now asking you if you'd like to watch them do archaeology. He's actually offering you um, an opportunity to experience using uh, doohickeys, thingamabobs, thingamajigs, whatchamacallits, um, you know, the specialized tools that he has for archaeology as they begin to do um, some dig tests. They... They they just happened upon this site because recent rains and floods had sort of unveiled or uh, revealed the um the the fossils here you have of the the goblin and the dinosaur, but they were hoping to expand beyond that and see if there was anything else around it. So they're they're gonna do some dig tests. Hmm. So yeah, so so they're doing basically like some secondary STPs, mm -hmm. radials, moving, in, moving into phase two site examination. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that if I could bump into him and suggest and suggest to him that uh, that Fred be moved away from the tent at night and to a different spot further away from the tent. And he asked, like, why? That's bold. <laughs> um. Well, I uh, well, uh, DM, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we'd already had a conversation with him about the possibility of some of the artifacts being cursed, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he, he's still doubtful about that, but that might just be because he moves the artifacts. Um, like, like once they're sort of excavated, they're they're stored, they're sold, they, they move quickly. He doesn't hold on to them. Um. <laughs> So he, and he doesn't, right, like he's not really interested in the artifacts all that much, so he doesn't handle them that much. So it's possible that he just hasn't experienced the sort of cursed effect of some of these objects. Understood. I, 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 I guess I just don't want us to come back here and find that Fred has gone uh, around the bend from the bad dreams. Okay. I mean, maybe. Maybe we can, uh, you know, hide one of these cursed objects in the hair doctors. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering you like sleight of hand it over there. If you want, you can do that. Um, but uh, I'm gonna tell you, like, he's probably gonna start a, a dream journal. 
<laughs> of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the he actually starts some motions and says, like, okay, um, we're actually gonna start doing this, uh, and he motions actually to two goblins, and you see one of them sort of sitting on the cart, or there's there's like a a push cart, one of them sitting on the cart. Um, and the one that's sitting on the cart doesn't seem to be having legs. Like, below, from the knee below, doesn't seem to have legs, and there's another goblin behind him, or behind the cart, that presumably is going to push the cart with the other goblin sitting on it. And so the, the professor excitedly sort of, you know, with a smile, is like, yes, this is how we are going to find, um, uh, this is how we're going to find further, or explore and examine more of the site in a scientific way, without bias. And we use a technique known as double blind studies. Okay, let me see where is it. And so you see these two goblins, they put on uh, blindfolds. Um, oh, one of them pulls out what looks kind of like God. a rock on a string, like a pendulum. And. And then the, oh, the goblin God. the goblin begins to push the other goblin along. And when the pendulum begins to swing wildly, uh, a third goblin begins to take notes and sort of marks the ground. So you can imagine that they're sort of rolling along, and every time they hit a rock, it swings wildly. And then the <laughs> third goblin takes notes and marks the spot. And you can see them sort of moving up and down the, um, up and down the grid. This is bringing back memories of pushing a GPR car. <laughs> <laughs> are they doing so, are they doing unidirectional or bidirectional transactions? <laughs> <laughs> unidirectional is better is better for GP. <laughs> you you basically just see them sort of like um like they they walk north along the line. They turn around once they get so far, and they turn back and start walking south. And they're basically just zigzagging up and down along the grid, marking um uh, points along uh, as they go along. Fall blindfolded. Yeah, yeah. So a bit, of, a bit of cursing as they stub their toes, and like <laughs> the pendulum sort of swinging a lot, and like ooh screams of excitement, like here, here, here. This pendulum is swinging. How do they stay straight along their transepts? <laughs> um, they don't. <laughs> the third couple that's taking notes that's not blindfolded is sort of guiding them, like, okay, no, no, this way, this way, that way. Um, okay. <laughs> so. Try to, trying to mark down, okay, like, oh, they got something there. Uh, maybe something there. Try not to fall into the stream. Maybe something there. Something there. Okay, yeah, there. Everything. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy cool. Okay. Well, it makes sense if they want to do fifty by fifties so examination. <laughs> you you bracket them around the the positive STPs. <laughs> So, they they sort of go along and they um, and you can see uh, wherever the they wherever the third goblin marks down a site, a few other goblins come around and they start to make little squares. <laughs> they mark it off with little strings and stakes and begin to sort of uh, scrape with their little uh, trowels and things like that. And uh, DM, what exactly is the um feature in the landscape in the at the northwest corner of the grid map here? Um, okay, so are you asking me the DM, or are you asking the professor? Oh, I, I, I can ask the professor as a grand all. I'm happy to do that. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we're not sure about what that is, but we have to be careful. Because you see all the straight lines and right angles? It may appear like that is an artificial artifact. Okay, but that may just be pareidolia, and we're just seeing things. 
Okay, so that's why we're doing this non-biased method to make sure that we're not affected by those sorts of things. Basically, I don't know. God, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Good God. Okay. So if you want, you can walk up there and see for yourself what it is. Do we want to walk up there, or do we want to start our two to three day journey north to find the uh, source of the cursed metal artifacts? I'm asking a theory engineer and Dagmar this, by the way. Curious to walk up there first before we head north. Fair enough. I'm not that too eager to meet Cthulhu myself either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, sec I second that. I yeah. Okay. So I guess, guess we'll stroll over to uh, the northwest corner of the grid map. Okay. Um, so as you sort of, um, so this is a sort of topog a topographical map. And so that f that that feature you see actually does sort of go uphill. You, you're slowly walking up this hill. What's the uh, index contour? <laughs> In other words, like how how great an incline is it between lines? Um, it's it's kind of rough. So you're talking like maybe you're you're talking like maybe a ten or twenty feet. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in terms of elevation change, um. Uh, so it's it's a very rough map, but again, he's sort of doing this uh, by hand. Um, he doesn't have that many tools at his disposal. So mostly the slope from the the the, the dinosaur site up to the feature that's northwest is mostly very gradual. But once you get to the feature, it sort of like shoots up rather steeply. Okay, so I want to climb up there. Okay, see what yeah. It, see what it is. So, as you sort of look up, this thing here seems to be a ramp. It's it's almost quite obviously a ramp or stairs or something. This here seems to be some sort of platform, and it's it's rectangular. Um. So, everybody, make an archaeological skill check. Roll investigation. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is this something that I can do guidance for or no? Yes, you can. Poor Dagmar. Have I ever <laughs> rolled that low? <laughs> yeah, I get, a, I get a 10. Yay, Janera. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, called you up to Janera. I, I had a, actually, I had a thought this week, Janera. Okay, so you know how the the school or the class president from the Hobgoblin uh, Academy looks up to you? Yes. I am thinking of making her like want to stop her studies and actually join you as an adventurer. And I'm thinking Aww. that her favorite weapon is going to be double hand crossbows. <laughs> yeah. So, so she's going to be Lara Croft as a hobgoblin following you around. So if you I would <laughs> love that. Give me a minion. <laughs> if you want to go like full archaeologist slash looter or whatever, you can and she will be your <laughs> she will be your sidekick. She needs an on theme name though. <laughs> we'll have to think of one for her. I gave her whatever her real remember. name is. We'll just ignore that and give her a nickname. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So. Okay. So Dagmar 
Dagmar, okay, so we're going to go down the line. So Dagmar walks up there, and it's like, this is the funniest <laughs> shaped hill you've ever been on. Like, it's as if a giant made a sandcastle here by the river. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm glad I, mean, I noticed something. I thought you were going to be like, she gets to the top of the hill, and she's like, it's a hill. This if you nice. like, like it, it's well, I mean that's what it is to you. To you, it's just a hill. It's a funny shaped hill. It's the weirdest <laughs> shape hill you've ever been on, but it's a hill. Um. So, theory and Gradal, um, both of you recognize that this must be artificial. You're not quite sure what, and if you sort of like scrape it a little bit, you'll notice that there's sort of like stone or something um like underneath but you can recognize this has to be artificial what it is you have no idea chanera so you're going to discover whatever it is you're going to discover what this is i just want you to describe okay. your archaeological slash monk technique you use to examine this give us the methodology <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna guess that there's probably, it, if this is a structure of some kind, some kind of building, that there's likely a footprint per se. So, like, when you look at the ground, you're going to see the clear outlines of what would have been the foundation of a structure or unless you know the the structure is still actually present and has just been overgrown by vegetation which at that point you know you just move the vegetation and can see the structure underneath so genera that's that's basically what you do so i just wanted to know whether you did a hey like punches right into the ground to get rid of the, the, the plants. Yes, <laughs> just like you know, super fist of fury and just expose the whole thing, and everybody's just like, "Whoa, Genera, that was awesome!" <laughs> okay. Because apparently, I'm Shira now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the. You do your best to sort of like examine it, and what happens is that it's basically a two-level uh, platform, a two-tier platform. There's a larger pl or the, the the broader platform that you can see the larger rectangular shape, uh, which is sort of crumbled slightly. That's why some of the the northern and southern edges of it are kind of blurry, kind of rounded off. But the the platform that's on top is still fairly intact. Um, and that sort of rectangle bit that kind of comes off of it is a ramp. Like, it's it's stairs. It's like a stairs and a ramp. Okay. Um, the the platform... The As you sort of look at the platform, you'll notice that there are, like, um, some sort of artifacts around its edges, like columns or pillars or something that uh, surround it. Oddly enough, strangely enough, um, oh yeah, there's also also some more down here along this bit here. Thanks to you, thank you, Chanera. She did all of this in uh, thirty minutes, <laughs> or uh, or whatever. Excavated all the post holes and everything. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, no, roll athletics for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, Genera doesn't quite ex ex excavate the whole thing, but she points out, and you, you start to notice that there are some things here. Um, and the thing that she points out uh, very interestingly is that in the middle of it, there seems to be some sort of hole. Like, you, like it's soft. Like, the, the pillar, or the, the platform is quite obviously some sort of stone platform. But there's a really soft spot of dirt in the middle. Um... And it seems to go deeper. Like, there's some sort of hole here, or um, abscess, or this void. There's something here, but you have no idea how deep it goes. Okay, Dagmar, I need you to go stand there. 
<laughs> I won't fit. You gotta put grout all there. I won't fit. <laughs> yeah, but you weigh more, so if it, like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I can step on it and hold him and then release him into the hole. <laughs> you guys don't even go down there. <laughs> You're the only it's... one who fits. <laughs> But isn't the hole filled in with dirt? Yeah, it is It is filled in with dirt. But you know, like, when you're on the platform, if you dig down, you only have to dig down um, so many inches to hit the stone platform. But if you keep digging mm -hmm. in the middle, it just keeps going. It just keeps going and going and going. So, um, I think our, our resident archaeologist, um, should be the one who picks up the shovel and starts digging. Huh, Genera? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, if you guys really want to find out what's down there, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to suspect that it's probably more bones. Yeah, yeah, I'm already watching the chat for like <laughs> This was, you know, the sacrificial pit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you know, as we say when we don't know what something is, it was ritualistic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are, uh, are any of the, uh, shovel hobs nearby, or is it just us kind of moseying around and checking this out without any supervision? Well, right now, the... <laughs> so, some of the... Sh so, the two shovel... Or the three shovel hobs, right, that are sort of, um, marking sites to be tested, they're slowly making their way up the hill towards you, so those are the ones that are closest to you. Uh, you can see the... The professor sort of off in the distance uh, directing people as they um, uh, start digging on the new sites. Uh, and you see some of the other um, goblins in the original um, dinosaur unit. And they're doing something with the bones. and they're, they're examining it. They're things. So if you want the professor, you'll have to call out for him. Well, um, what do you guys think? Do you, should we continue to, like, poke around in this thing, or should we so, divert back is... to our main objective? <laughs> <laughs> and also, too, like, uh, the, the players, I mean, we, we can handle this but the characters the party um the party might i mean might have to think about the fact that like we might not agree with what's happening here but they are the ones in charge of this area and they are the professionals so maybe we should see what they have to think about this before we decide whether or not to check for initiative <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. We can, we, we can definitely ask. The guy seemed very, like, you can see in the picture in the lower right-hand corner the degrees to which he is going to to avoid bias. <laughs> so I'm telling you, you, know, you should dig here. He's going to just ignore us and keep following around the blindfolded people in a cart. Double blind tested, okay? Double blind. <laughs> it's double standard. Okay, so listen. I'm gonna have to do this to my crew now. I'm gonna tell them that we gotta double blind test things and just blindfold <laughs> two of them and have them walk around in circles in the desert. Can you film it? Yes. Just the pure, just absolute confusion. And then the realization that this, the person telling me to do this is the person 
<laughs> you know, signing off on my paycheck potentially. So I need to just do it, I guess. <laughs> But I'm asking for clarification and she's not giving me any, but I do want money. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see if somebody would actually do it or not. <laughs> yeah, because there are no snakes in the desert. <laughs> well, I mean, we're at that iffy point. Um, where it's like, it's not quite warm enough, not quite cold enough, you yeah. know. Right. Oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hear them rattling, so I mean, <laughs> the thing they have to worry about more than snakes is the yeah. Choya. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Choya. <laughs> Choya doesn't give you warning either. <laughs> no, like, it'll follow you home and murder your family. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you don't have to be blindfolded, and Choya will still manage to stab you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, now that we've 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 <laughs> distracted everybody, then what's the plan? <laughs> 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 no, we found this this sort of hole in the center here. What are these other smaller blue dots around the area? They seem to be some more artificial, uh, some more artifacts of some kind, but you're not quite sure yet because they haven't been excavated. But um, you they're can tell. Them, sticking up out of the ground. Yeah, there, there's just something sticking out of the ground. It's um, but oh. they're they're like maybe three feet high, between three and four feet high, um, and they're kind of roughly barrel shaped, um, maybe about a foot and a half, two feet in diameter. Because I'm thinking, looking at this, are we thinking column drums? Something like that. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the uh, at the design here, and it's definitely looking like a uh, uh, peristyle kind of setup. Uh, why, why am I talking like red all like this? This is <laughs> this is my talk. This is a big talk. This, this is, is great. This is what happens. Voice. Yeah, this, this I, is what weird. Look at this. It actually looks like the Great Temple at Petra, where I actually excavated. That looks cool. But that's that's really cool. But we need to decide: are we are we going up north to find the source of these cursed artifacts, or are we attempting to muscle our way into this guy's excavation and dig around this area? Well, I wonder if we can tip him off to this and be like, hey, we're going to travel up north, and then on our way back, we can stop by and see what you found. Sounds like a great idea to me. Well, Unless of course you still well, that way, you know, we're still around. we're still doing what we need to do and then I we mean, can also figure out what it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, somebody somebody needs to talk to this guy about sampling strategies because this is just <laughs> <laughs> Well, that and do we trust him? So if we were to say that, hey, we're you know, we're tipping you about, you know, the structure being here. Um, and you might want to look into this. We're going to go up north, but we're going to come back down eventually in a couple days and check in with you again. Can we safely assume that he'll still be here? Do we trust him enough to... Because we're, we're kind of giving him an opportunity to get away from us if he wants to. Well, from your f I go for it, Janera. Uh, I was just going to say, he seems to be very, like open with us about stuff like it doesn't seem like he sees us as a threat of any kind and I feel like if we tip him off on this it's probably a guarantee that he will still be here in a few days because it's going to take them a while to excavate that but that's just my my thought on it based on his the way that he's been so open with sharing information with us and he's been pretty friendly so you know I don't know no, that Brag makes sense. 
can we take can we take some of his crew with could we take Fred with us? Fred needs to get away. Fred can are be you your gonna, new champ. <laughs> are you yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, are you gonna have another follower, Dagmar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you gonna pay Fred though? Remember, Fred gets two gold a day. I'll give Fred two gold the elevator bag. They're not dressed like they're getting two gold a day. No. <laughs> Well, they only get paid so much up front. They get some paid later, right? I mean, you know, that's how it goes. Um, and second, they're saving up, okay? If Fred comes with us, I will give him back the owl teddy, the owl bear teddy bear. That's it. It's a big <laughs> offer. He really wanted it. He made me roll for it. <laughs> I'll only think, offer it once. I think the role was for if he could, like, pull it out of your kung fu death grip. <laughs> but he tried. That's the point. He, didn't, he saw me. I'm intimidating. He came up to me, and he tried. It meant that much to him. So I'm thinking he really wanted it. So if you want, you can all walk down the hill, try to find Fred. <laughs> And you can try to either intimidate him or persuade him <laughs> or just give him a higher offer of like two gold and a silver a day. I charmed because him. Dagmar's made her decision. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. What? Jeez. Oh, so, if you're doing charisma, then you're doing persuasion. Okay. Okay, so wait, wait. Now, the persuasion is you give him back the teddy owl bear, and he just comes with you, no pay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You need to give you need to give me a reason though. Like it's just he, you give the owl bear and then that's it. Like why else is he gonna give? Like okay, okay. So so because I rolled charisma, right? Right. So here's my spiel, Fred. You're not having good sleep. Uh, I'm having good sleep. So I'm gonna give you teddy bear, but maybe teddy bear is not enough to get you good sleep. So here's my thought process. Okay. Um. Maybe if you come with us and get away from here for a couple days, you can have good sleep, right? And then I'll give you the teddy bear to make sure. But if you don't come with us, you can't have the teddy bear, and then you're stuck here having really bad sleep, okay? So you should maybe come with us. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what happened? So you walk down the hill. You like you see Frank or Fred. Sorry, Fred is sitting at the edge of the unit, and he's actually sitting there with a few other goblins, and they're doing something to the to the bones and like the rocks that they're like the, the artifacts that they're pulling out of the the unit. They're doing something. You give this explanation. You, know, you tap Fred on the shoulder. You give him this explanation. He like just blinks at you kind of dumbfounded, like, not sure what you just said. <laughs> kind of, like, sort of tips his head back and forth a little bit in thought and thinks, and then says, you know what? You're right. I think a vacation oh, okay. would do me good and help me sleep better. Thanks for the suggestion, Dagmar. I did it. <laughs> he, like, gets up and, like, sort of, like, um, taps the professor on the shoulder and gives him the explanation that he's just going to go on vacation for a few days. He'll, um, <laughs> that he's going to use up his vacation days, his PTO, whatever. Um, <laughs> and the doctor's like nods and like pulls out a paper and writes a few notes down. Uh, wow. He didn't have to give two weeks notice to take vacation. Yeah, That's impressive. Notice. Yeah. Um, or, you know, just straight up be told no because you're in the middle of a project. <laughs> the double blind team hears this from the pit and they're just like, wait, can we do that? I mean, I lost two legs on this project. Can I use my sick 
No, that was in the war, remember? We weren't supposed to talk about that. It's traumatizing. <laughs> so, as the, fu- as the sort of final joke for the evening, because we're about to close, um, the professor comes over with Fred to the unit, and, and you look down, and there's a few goblins sort of sitting around. They have a blanket. They have a blanket, and they have the artifacts sort of placed on it. And you have the same setup again, where you have two goblins who are blindfolded and a third goblin taking notes. Um, and so uh, they are, the professor asks Fred to just at least finish up his work for the day, and then he's good to go. And so uh, Fred sh- sits down along with them and, and starts to take more notes along with the other goblins there. So it's the Fred and other goblin taking notes, and two more goblins that are blindfolded. One of the goblins reaches out to the bl- blind or the the blanket and kind of blindly gropes around, grabs an artifact, hands it to the other blindfolded goblin, and that goblin then begins to examine the artifact. He examines the artifact by like touching it and rubbing it, by smelling it, by like licking it and tasting it. And as he does each of those things, he describes the sensations that he gets to the people taking notes. So it's like, hmm, this feels really smooth and hard. Mmm, tastes like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and they proceed to take down as much detailed notes of their examination of each and every artifact. <clears throat> and then the professor's like, yes, yes, you need to be exam- able to, you must examine every aspect. Do not miss any sort of data that you could possibly get out of this artifact. It will help us later understand the larger context of this excavation. That's totally how I analyze lithics. <laughs> um, so, and he, he tells you, remember, you have to write down information about its taste, its smell, its feel, its sound, and its sight. So the, the one who's like sort of like handling it, like puts it up to his ear and like shakes it to see if it like rattles or whatever. Like, hmm, sounds like sand. <laughs> and then finally, like the last thing he does is sort of like lifts his like blindfold a little bit, like looks at it, like, hmm. Not very shiny. Puts down his blindfold and hands it, uh, hands it over to someone taking notes so they can put it away. And they slowly go through each and every artifact that way. Do they? They don't have like a calipers, a Munsell chart, like nothing. <laughs> they are using their GIS. Their um, their Goblin intuition science. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, God yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Goblin intuition science. All right. Well. <laughs> Which I know is contradictory for no. the stupid bias, but whatever. Go with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So party. Can we get that on a shirt? <laughs> yes. Yes. We need shirts now. <laughs> we definitely need Goblin intuition <laughs> science. I'm gonna put that on the website somewhere. <laughs> the picture of a blindfolded goblin. <laughs> yeah, it literally could just be his his drawing of the two goblins blindfolded. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and nobody will get it, but we'll be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be a recurring thing. We got a theme song. We got an outro theme song. Now we come up with merchandise ideas. <laughs> this Karen's is how we get rich guys. Do again. <laughs> yeah. So, party. What is your decision? Are you going to stay here? And learn archaeology from Professor Zixvudzirk P. Anulkijig Fedkaba. Or are you going to continue your journey north in the hopes of finding the tomb where these artifacts came from so that you may raid them? Or rather that we can find the source of the curse of these artifacts and 
cure the who knows how many people who are suffering from those uh, curses. Yes, because if archaeology has taught me anything, it's if you put the thing back, it usually makes everything okay. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's like a keyhole. All you have to do is stick it back in the same way you took it out. <laughs> oh, good golly. With Dagmar's rolls, you're going to put it like upside down and make it worse. <laughs> she makes everything explode. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good with us going north if you guys are yes I agree because I figure we can come back on our way back after we're done dealing with our main objective I think I, I got my uh, my fair dose for the moment of uh, goblin intuition science from the uh, <laughs> GIS experts GIS specialists, if you will. So, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> also, that if we... <laughs> I forgot to tell you there is a. They do have a metal detector, um, but I think they call it a thingamajig. Okay, that's what yeah. I call that's... most of my tools. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <fine>. No, <laughs> here, here's here's a question for you, if. They're doing this goblin intuition science. Yeah. But they're all standing together in like a semicircle. Yeah. Is that ArcGIS? <laughs> <laughs> you had to go and make it worse. <laughs> I did. I really did. <laughs> I, <laughs> Michael, uh, so, I mean, other than annoying the hell out of Sarah, I did do this in the hopes that you would use this as examples for your introductory classes if you do intro to archaeology classes. Apparently, <laughs> Sarah hates me, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we really do need to come to the decision because we're about out of time. So I'm guessing you're all heading north then? North. Yeah. Get us out of here. Oh, God. <laughs> Bad. So with that, the party makes the decision to journey onward, northward to the source of some of these cursed objects and these cursed artifacts um, that have harmed uh, innocent people, including their friend Ami from Goblin Town. What will they find as they travel north? Stay tuned and find out, everybody. Thank you all for listening and joining in in Goblin Town all right, and Goblin Archaeology. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Apologies to all non-archaeologists who are watching this. <laughs> <laughs> and archaeologists. And archaeologists. <laughs> 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 apologies to all. <laughs>